Hello from the Forstronics YouTube channel. Welcome to solder paste, surface mount components, a toaster oven, and you. So in this video, we're going to talk about how to use solder paste with surface mount components to solder them on a PCB board using a heat source, namely a toaster oven. And the point of this video is I want to show hobbyists that aren't familiar with this or may picture this as something hard to do that it's actually pretty easy. So let's get started. Okay, how it's done. Well, First of all, if you're not familiar with this, I mean, how do you solder components on a board? Well, you can use a soldering iron or you can turn it over to a board house and they can use a machine to pick and place it on there. But there's also this method in between and this is great for surface mount components because they can be very hard to solder on by hand. But by using solder paste, it's just a little bit of glue, put the component on, heat it up and voila. Best to use this with surface mount components. If you have a board that has both surface mount and through hole, I typically put on the surface mount, heat it up, use my solder paste, and then I move on to the through, through hole soldering. Solder paste, uh, right there is a picture of the brand I'm gonna use from uh, Chip Quick. I'll, I'll give more details on the product number later. But the whole idea is, once again, we're gonna put light dabs of solder paste on our traces where we want our surface mount components to go. We're gonna place the surface mount components on there. We're gonna heat them up based on a heating profile, which I'll show you later. And magically the paste turns into hardened solder. And I think one perception which makes people think that this is harder than it is, is they think they have to get the solder paste right exactly where it is or everything's gonna go wrong. Not really, if you're familiar with soldering, the solder will flow, they call this reflow by the way, the solder will flow to the metal that's heated. So you don't have to get the solder paste perfect. You don't want to put too much on there, but you don't have to get it perfect because it'll flow and make the connection for you. So one other thing to mention is I mentioned there's going to be a profile we need for the for the uh, heating up. And, and just to be clear that they make, they make reflow ovens. So you can buy a reflow oven. I think they're like, I don't know, $1,000. But you can also use a toaster oven. And I'm going to use, I think I have that exact same toaster oven in, in the picture. It was like $25. So I'm going to use that. Like I said, you have to heat it based on the solder paste profile. And you also want to make sure you're not going above the heat limits of your components, which will be listed on the data sheet. But what's important is we don't want to use the temperature settings on the toaster oven because they're going to be way off. You want to use a temperature sensor and you need a temperature sensor that can withstand a lot of heat. So I'm going to recommend a thermocouple, thermocouple temperature sensor. And a thermocouple basically uses two dissimilar metals, puts them together. When you do that, a voltage or a current will flow and based on the temperature will vary that current. So that's how a thermocouple works. You could buy thermocouple boards. I'm gonna have a thermocouple measurement instrument in, in my example. And once again, the reason we're using thermocouple is because it's very tolerant to high heats. So essentially you have the probe going into the toaster oven. So first let's start out by taking a look at applying the solder paste and putting on the component onto the PCB board. Okay, here we are with my solder paste, chip quick. And what I just did there was I took the plunger and I put some pressure on the solder paste. Let me back that up actually. Just to get it to flow out. And it, it's not like a, uh, a toothpaste where you squeeze and it comes out. It's, you put a little pressure and it'll just keep coming out. That's why I always have a paper towel uh, and some isopropic alcohol nearby. So I hit the plunger here to get it flowing. You can see in the background, let me press it again. You can see in the background, I have a bunch of different tips. To be honest, I've used other tips, but I typically use one size and that's pr pretty much works for everything I try to do. And I should also mention that for this example, I'm taking an AT Tiny. It's either the 84 or the 44. You can see a finished board here, but I'm basically putting it on this simple prototyping board that I made. So the eight, I'm taking the AT Tiny, which is made by Atmel, like the 328P that's on the uh, Arduino Uno. I'm taking the AT Tiny, there's an Arduino uh, bootloader for, for the AT family, and I'm putting it on a demo board or a prototyping board so I can use it. 
So that's that's what we're going to see uh, soldered in this video. So I'm just wiping off some of the excess solder paste. So it's going to be a gray liquid. It's not like a you know a solid metal like you would expect. Okay, I pick up the board and I purposely smudge the solder paste on a little sloppy. In fact, I put a little too much on those first couple pads and I'm purposely doing that and I'll explain why in a second. So you can see I'm not being too neat. I'm just kind of dabbing it where the footprints are, where the metal pads are. I bring it closer. It doesn't focus right away, but eventually it comes into focus. And see, I'm just dabbing a little bit on there. You don't need much. And to be honest, let me back that up. To be honest, I put way too much here. And I'm doing that as an example. I want to show you how good the solder actually flows when you heat it up. So you don't have to have it perfect. Now, I wouldn't recommend it having it like this, but I'm doing this for example purposes. There we go. It's on there. And I'm actually going to stop it here. I try showing it, but I, I'll show another video with the component actually on there in the, the next example. Okay, here is the solder profile that I told you about. So here is the model number of the chip quick solder paste that I'm using. Here is the recommended profile. So this is what they want you to do to heat it up. They want you to heat it up. They want it to sort of rise at a slow time period. They want it to peak. That's when around here is when the solder is actually going to reflow. And when I say that, you'll actually see the solder paste turn from a dirty gray to a silver color because it's reflowing. The paste chemicals are coming out and it's just becoming pure solder. I'll mention that I'm using a lead-based solder. So if you're familiar with Rojas, which by the way, Rojas sounds like one of the uh, places in Middle Earth. You know, you have the Shire, you have Mordor, you have Rohan. And then if you cross the Sky Mountains and go through Fangorn Forest, you have Rojas. But anyway, for any, of the, for any of you that are familiar with Rojas, it's, it's about adding uh, using solder that's lead-free. So lead-free solder is available from TripQuick. It has a higher temperature profile, so it's harder to work with. So for this hobby purposes, I don't mind poisoning my children or the environment. I'm going to use uh, lead solder. Okay, something to mention about the profile itself. The reason they have this profile is... You don't want to be at the high heat points too long because you can then damage the components, damage the board. So really, the reason you have this lower profile is more to soak the board and the components. So the internal pieces of the board and components heat up and everything gets a common temperature so that when you go to this high temperature, the solder will reflow. Another thing I will mention is this profile is not strict. I mean, if you type this into a reflow oven, it'll do exactly this. You don't have to be exact on this profile. You just want to be careful not to go too high. And another thing I'll mention is you don't even need to go up this high. 235, 235 degrees Celsius. You'll see the solder flow around 200 degrees Celsius. Depending how big your board is, you may even see it at 190. After it flows, I always let it go up a little bit long, a little bit higher and then let it stay there for a bit and then I bring it down quickly but you don't typically will not have to go this high in temperature and for this beginning portion I'm going to start here you know I, I let the toaster oven heat up to 100 degrees Celsius it doesn't matter if you take longer than 30 seconds this is just letting it soak so let's look at an example of doing the reflow in a toaster oven so here is the board I put the chip on I didn't show that because it was a little too clumsy with the camera but you just put the chip on. You want to get the feet lined up. Once again, it doesn't matter if you smear a little bit of the solder paste. It's not the end of the world. The, the part will stick a little bit. So you can see I kind of have it on the side. Now, I will say, once again, for example purposes, I was real sloppy here. This has a little too much solder paste on it. You don't need this much. If you see this leg here or this leg here, that's probably all you need. Here I have a little too much, but you'll see it won't matter. It'll still work. So I'm going to place it into the toaster oven. You can see the thermocouple wire. It's right here. Okay, here we are. Here is my instrument that's measuring my thermocouple. So I told you I had an instrument to measure it. Uh, you can get a off-the-shelf sensor board, though, that, that are not that expensive. 
So I'm at 100 degrees Celsius. I have my iPad to time it. I'm turning it up so I can go up to 150, which the profile says in about 120 seconds. Once again, it's not very strict. You can see my thermocouple sensor right here is right near the board because I want to have it close to the board. And once again, do not follow the temperature readings on the toaster oven. They're way off. So don't use that as a guide. Okay, it's heating up. Let me go to the last video. Okay, here we are. We're at about 190 and you can't see it. But you can see, let's see if we get a better picture of it. Nope, because my camera sucks and I don't know what I'm doing. What, what you can't see here is those globs of solder have now flowed up the legs and attached the legs to the board. And I'll show a picture when it's done. But basically, since this was a small board, it's already reflowing at 196. So I'm, I'm basically going to stop it here. Okay, here is the final board after I take it out and let it cool down. One thing I'll mention that I didn't mention during the videos is if you're afraid the heat's climbing too fast and it's getting too hot, all you have to do is open the door on the toaster oven, and that's an easy way to control the heat to bring it down quickly. And after you do it a couple times, you get the hang of it, and it'll be easy. Like I mentioned for this, I only had to get up to about 190, and I saw it reflow. And then, of course, I let it get up to about 200 for 15 or so seconds, then I brought the temperature down. Then once I really, really wanted the temperature to cool down, I opened the door and, you know, shut it off. One thing to mention is give this ample time to cool down because if you don't, you pull it out and it's still wet and you have hot molted metal going everywhere. So be careful with that. Notice, though, the pins that I had were a little sloppy in the back. Notice they're still good. And I did ohm this out later. The legs themselves have a lot of extra solder on them, but it's only on the legs. It's not hanging off all over the board. So you can see that even though I was real sloppy here, it still worked. So this is not something that's hard to do. And the legs here, where I had a lower amount, they look, they look pretty perfect. So once again, real easy to do. Okay, that's it for this video. Solder paste, surface mount components, a toaster oven, and you. So in this video, we looked at how easy it is to use a toaster oven and solder paste to solder on surface mount components on a PCB. Now I will mention, I, I showed a manual method using a toaster oven. They do have videos out there that show you how to turn your toaster oven into a reflow oven. Uh, maybe I'll do that in the future, but right now I was just happy kind of showing you the manual way how you can buy a cheap toaster oven and get started right away. To be honest, the, the solder paste is more expensive than the toaster oven itself. If you like what you saw in this video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, follow me on Twitter, and check out the Forcetronics.com website. Thank you for watching.